kids, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking, I'm introducing a new series that I'm calling Winging It. This is actually an old idea that I had a long time ago, um, but I'm finally implementing it, and it's basically, I'm gonna just make some food based on what I have in my pantry. Today it's gonna be a pumpkin risotto. Basically, I was just getting like so stressed out over what to make every week. I'm a Gemini, I don't know if that tells you anything, a lot of indecisiveness going on within my brain and my heart, so it's just, it's so, it's such a relief to me to just be like, okay, I'm just gonna like decide what to make based on what we have in the pantry. It'll probably be good, I'll be honest with you. Not that this will be S-H-I-T, it'll be D-E-L-I-C-I-O-U-S. Right, high five. Let's make this go right into the camera, like <laughs> So let's go to the pantry and see if we actually have everything that we need to make a butternut squash risotto. Did I say pumpkin risotto before? I don't remember, dang it. Look, we have arborio rice. And look, a butternut squash. I guess I got the squash at the farmer's market like two weeks ago. It's got a little bit of a spot on it. I'm gonna cut that off. I don't care, it's fine. It's totally fine. I also need to get an onion. Oh, I hope I have onion. Don't look in my fridge. I mean, you are looking in my fridge. It's kind of messy. Oh, okay. So I um, don't have white wine, but I have sherry. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> it's totally like I'm turning into my grandma. I have sherry, but not white wine. All right, so I did a video many, many moons ago about just how to do a basic risotto. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of use that. I'm gonna start out with some onion. Let's see, let's chop up some onion. Um, I wanna chop it up pretty small because I like when it just ends up sort of dissolving into the risotto. Am I pronouncing that right? You know what, I think I'm not gonna use a peeler on this. I'm just gonna do it with my knife. Don't cut your fingers off, for heaven's sake. So I like to separate the shaft from the bulb. Oh my gosh, these onions are making my eyes water. You guys, I'm crying. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna go a little bit deeper on this little weird spot. Oh, a little bit deeper. Oh, gonna have to go a little bit deeper. Still, hang on. We'll get there. Here we go. Dang, man organic produce. What a rip off. I'm just kidding. I um, do try to buy organic produce, not only for the earth, but also for the people that work in the fields. Chris and I did a video series for Taste Made years ago called Hilo's Texas Kitchen. And one of the, my favorite videos that we did was we went down to South Texas and we met with an organic citrus grapefruit farmer. And he had been like, you know, like his family had had this orchard or whatever since like he was a kid. And he said in the 70s, and he'd worked on it his whole life, and he said in the 70s, um, Texas A&M University came, uh, they wanted to do a study on farm workers to see uh, how much pesticide residue was in their bloodstream. And he'd been, you know, working on this farm since he was a child, and I think he was like a teenager, like 17 or something when they came and did the study. He said that literally the pesticide residue in his bloodstream was off the charts, he said. I don't know what kind of chart they had at the time, but that really, like, I don't know, that really affected both Chris and I. Um, so anyway, not to get all like preachy and stuff about it, but that is actually a big reason why I do try to buy organic produce. Okay, I'm gonna scoop the seeds out. And you know, I mean, I hope that you know that any kind of winter squash, like acorn squash or butternut squash, and actually um, butternut squash is really delicious. Any kind of seeds can be roasted like you do pumpkin seeds. Um, I've got a video on that too, but lately, Actually, I've not been doing it in the oven. I've just been rinsing them off and kind of pat them dry and then just fry them in a skillet in some oil and I like it much better that way. So you can try that too if you like. And I'm gonna keep all the like 
juicy bits of the seed stuff aside here because it's got a lot of flavor and a lot of color. That was so loud. And it's got a lot of color, which I like for this dish, or at least I think I'm gonna like it. As I said, I haven't actually made this before. I'm just making it up. But this is like what I would do if it was dinner time. And I was like, oh, what am I gonna make? I have butternut squash and some rice. So anyway, I'm sure this is a familiar thing for most of y'all. I bet a lot of y'all don't cook with recipes every night and you just like figure it out. That's what makes cooking so creative. Next step is we're gonna go to the stove and saute some onion with some rice. Then you'll just have to wait and see. Whoa, <laughs> cliffhanger. <laughs> well, fancy meeting you here over here by my stove. Okay, so I've got some vegetable broth here. You could use chicken broth, but um, I had some vegetable broth, so I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna add my butternut squash to my broth, which a lot of recipes want you to roast it, but it seems like a waste of energy and time. So while that's happening, I'm just gonna like let that come to a boil. Cause that's the trick is you want to make sure that your stock is simmering as you add it to the rice. So let's get some EVOO in here. What's up, Rachel Ray? Did I ever tell y'all? Like I used to watch Rachel Ray religiously, like when she kind of first started and just had her like 30 minute meals show, I would wake up. So I have chronic insomnia, which is super fun. I would wake up at like three or four in the morning and just go watch like Rachel Ray reruns and plan my menu for the week and make a grocery list. <laughs> this was when I was like 25. I was in like prime party mode, but still um, a major dork. I mean, I partied, but I also did dorky stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, I just, I love her. I think she's so cute. Okay, so I also minced up some garlic when you weren't looking, sorry about that. But you know how to do that, right? And then I'm gonna add that. And then just gonna let this cook together and get kind of nice and soft soft and doughy like my entire abdomen after I had a child. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, what's up moms? You know what I'm talking about. It's okay. I love my body. Even like that Elvira video, like I thought I looked pretty hot. And then when I was watching the video, I was like, oh, I look like I can see like fat rolls and stuff, but I don't care. I just don't care anymore. What a relief. How amazing. Well, this is like becoming an online journal where I like talk about my feelings. I started seeing a therapist. I mean, I've seen therapists before, but I started seeing a new therapist um, talking about my feelings a lot. It's been good. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to this to help these onions soften up. I'll kind of draw some of the water out. Smells delicious. Ooh, you know what I think I'm gonna add is maybe what if I added a bay leaf? I'm gonna do it. There we go, half a bay leaf. What else? That's all for now. There'll be more later, I'm sure. Ooh, it already smells fresh. So this is getting nice and soft. I'm gonna add, such a pretty sound. I'm gonna add a cup of Arborio rice. You could use any kind of short grain rice, again. Don't at me. I, I mean, I've made it with like sushi rice. I've made it with bomba rice, the Spanish like paella rice. But you want something short and starchy. That's the key. And we're gonna let this kind of cook for a couple of minutes. Make sure it gets coated with all the oil. This is so fun. I love just kind of cooking without I mean, I have an end point, obviously. I'll stop when I'm done. I'll sleep when I'm dead. That's what I tell myself when I'm having insomnia in the middle of the night. You can sleep when you're dead. Just get up and start working. It's fine. But it's kind of nice just going with the flow. You know, it's like when you're on a surfboard. I've never surfed. I don't know what that's like. You don't want it to brown, but you want it to kind of start looking translucent. Oh yeah. It's happening, baby. Okay, I think we're ready for the scary part. I mean, the sherry part. Get it? 
This is a dry sherry, not a cream sherry. Cream sherry is a little sweeter. So I don't know, let's just see what happens. Maybe I should measure this so I don't totally F myself. A lot of stuff's happening. Oh, okay, it smells good. I feel like it'll go well with this butternut squash thing that we're going here, because it's like a sweet, kind of rich wine. Oh, and look. Okay, so as soon as this kind of cooks off, look at that. Perfect timing. This was meant to be, obviously. I've got my sauce a cooking. And I'm going to add about a cup. So four little ladles. And if you get some squash in there, that's fine. It'll keep cooking in here. This ladle, actually funny story, the orange kitchen. I know a lot of y'all remember the orange kitchen. This came with the kitchen. This was like one of the weird things that the previous uh, person left behind. I'm just going to keep adding and stirring until it's done until we get to the end point. And it'll probably take 20 or 30 minutes from the time you add the first bit of broth. So have patience and go easy on yourself. Talking to myself. Okay, we're almost finito. <laughs> Such a poser, y'all, with my fake Italian. This is looking real creamy, real nice. If you need to add a little bit more liquid, just kind of taste your rice as you go. You want it to be soft all the way through, but it shouldn't be mushy. And see the pumpkin or the butternut squash just kind of disappears. It's almost like a magic trick. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh my God, I'm so smart. I'm gonna add some butter, three tablespoons, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the heat off. And then I'm gonna add some Parmesan. I feel like about two ounces is the right amount. Let's see. Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. Oh, and the texture just feels so smooth. I will say, even though this is maybe a little bit tedious, Risotto is a really fun thing to make, I think. I find it very relaxing to just stand and stir and smell. Don't forget the smell. It's a very important part of stand and stir. Oh my gosh. Whoa, flippin' beautiful. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I have a special idea. I've got a little tiny fry pan here. Fry pan, who the f calls it a fry pan? Skillet, I don't know where that came from a little olive oil and then I just went out to my front yard and I picked some rosemary okay so I'm just gonna pull the little rosemary leaves off of the stem I'm gonna try to make a fancy fried rosemary garnish because you know how at fancy restaurants they have fried sage leaves and they're always so good but I don't have any sage and also rosemary goes really good with winter squashes so add my Rosemary. <gasps> Feels like a Christmas tree on fire. It's incredible. Okay, these are looking toasty and crisp. The one thing about this tiny little skillet is the handle gets mighty hot. Okay, ta-da! Whoa. So I'm gonna Put my little crispy rosemary on top of here. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Ooh, I'm gonna save this rosemary oil for making something else. I'm gonna try it right now. Right here, right now. Whatever happened to Jesus Jones? Hands up if you remember that dude. That was a good song. Feels like my middle school Valentine's Day dance. That song was very popular. Mmm. I did it. I winged it. I wunged it. I totally winged and wunged a butternut squash risotto that is very delicious, even though I didn't even have white wine and I used sherry instead like a grandma. And I'm wearing isotoner slippers also like a grandma. <laughs> 
thank you for watching. Uh, leave me a comment. I love you. Bye. Cheers. <laughs> I did burn my tongue. That's kind of a bummer. I'm gonna do it again though.